Good morning, friends. Today we'll start chapter seven of our tutorial series on Apache Spark for Java developers, which is Spark RDD transformations. And we will check the most important methods here, which is map, flat map, and filter. Let's discuss about what is RDD transformations. I think we have already discussed about this in brief uh, in about in uh, chapter one when we are discussing about uh, all the theoretical topics. So RDD transformations are Spark operations. When executed on RDD, it results in a single or multiple new RDDs. Since RDD are immutable in nature, transformations always create new RDD without updating an existing one. So it's very much similar to that how we have got any immutable class in Java, like for example, string class. String classes, string objects are also immutable, which means that whenever we try to create new object, uh, new string, uh, or try to concat it uh, with another string, it always results in a new string without updating the existing one. The same happens with RDD as well. RDDs are always are also immutable in nature, and any operation on it or any transformation on it will always create a new RDD. And RDD transformations are also lazy operations, meaning none of the transformations get executed until we call an action on Spark RDD. So in the previous chapter, we learned learn, uh, about some actions like reduce, fold, and aggregate, right? Because these are actually uh, actions. It's very much similar to like uh, what we have, like uh, terminal operations in stream, in, in Java stream. So whenever any act terminal operation is encountered or when he, or any action is encountered in RDD, in context of RDD, like reduce, fold, aggregate, and all, only then the actual transformations will be happening. So in this chapter, we are going to learn about this, that uh, because since RDDs are immutable, any transformations on it result in a new RDD, leaving the current one unchanged. And it will be only triggered when any action will be called on it. So this is about basics about the RDD and transformations. Now, there are also two types of RDD transformations. One is narrow transformation and the other one is wider transformation. So let's uh, look. Let's look about it. That what is what is the difference between these two? So transformations which compute data living on a single partition. There will not be any data movement between partitions to execute narrow transformations. So we know that for one RDD is like uh, have have multiple partitions. Each partition living on a separate uh, worker node. So there will not be any data movement between partitions to execute narrow transformations. And these are the functions such as map, map partition, flat map, filter, union are some examples of narrow transformation. So let's hear in a, in a better diagram. So we have got this one RDD, right? And this RDD has been uh, like split across like multiple partitions. It can be on the same worker node or several worker nodes. And for example, uh, we have got a data like one, two, three, four, I've just created a dummy data like this. So whenever we call any map filter or any type of other narrow transformation, so this transformation would be happening in the same partition, right? For example, if I'm changing this double to a string, uh, a map function is that there is a, to convert a double data into a string data. So only this partition would be, uh, would be executed. I mean, the transformation would be done only in this partition because this mapping doesn't need to be done on different partitions. The executor running on this particular node, it, the, the, it doesn't need to like do a map operation on other partitions. It will just do the mapping or filtering here in the same partition. So for each other partition, it would be just uh, the transformation action would be taken on the same partition without affecting or, without, or independent of any other partition. So this is what about narrow transformation that as we just learned, that there will not be any data movement because it's not required. The mapping filtering is all done on the same partition. So this is about a narrow transformation. Now the wider transformation that transformations which compute data living on many partitions. So there will be data movement between partitions to execute wider transformation because there's a lot of shuffling of data required. They are also called shuffle transformations. Functions such as group by key, aggregate by key, aggregate, join, repartition, are some examples of a wider transformation. So let's look again. So here, because for, just, just say for example, like we have got group by key, right? So when we do a group by, because we need to group by for uh, the, for that particular, that key can be residing on other partitions. 
for example if i am just doing a group by key by a string by a string field and because this data has been partitioned into multiple uh, multiple nodes or multiple partitions for an rdd so group by key what it will do is that it will perform the group by on that field on the one partition then it will also set, uh, collect all the data from the other partition because that uh, that key can be present in the other partition as well so that's why a lot of shuffling of data is is required for this type of transformations and that's why they are termed as wider transformation so when compared to narrow transformations of course wider transformations are expensive operations due to lot of shuffling whenever we are like uh, the data is moving across uh, the various partitions of course then there would be it would be more expensive operation so let, in, enough of the theory about this now let's go with the very first transformation that we will uh, dig uh, dive uh, deep dive into which is